Oh yeah. So we're taking a little bit of a break from the boat stuff. We're doing some side-by-side -side stuff today. So Kyle came over, he brought his 2018 X3 over. We're gonna be adding some more power to it today, doing some other cool stuff and surprising him with a few new goodies for this thing that he's really gonna like and has needed for a while. So let's go see where he's hiding and show you guys what we're putting on this thing. Well, we're out here at the uh, wind capital of the United States, Wilson Motorsports, RRU TV. Kyle's here, he's got his X3. We're about to do some work on this thing. This thing did run pretty good, but we've got some stuff here that's gonna make it run a lot better. Yeah, I'm pumped. I mean, it's been a few months in the works, I think. Yeah. So I'm Let's pumped. go inside and take a look at the stuff we're getting for this thing. All right. I also got some stuff that you don't know about. All right. <laughs> All right, we're at the box. Let's take a look at some of this stuff. So what do we got here? So, whoa, <laughs> whoa, this is that's tough. The, uh, stock turbo off your machine so turbo rr mine's a turbo r so a little bit bigger add a little bit more power um different engagement spring so this is a 2900 engagement spring mine's got uh 2300 i think or yeah yeah somewhere around there somewhere so around there. yeah the turbo rr turbos are a little bit bigger so we're probably going to be in the vicinity on e85 of 260 horsepower so the turbo r engine has a little bit more compression than okay. the turbo rr engine so that combined with a bigger turbo more power so that'll be sweet like you said we've got the high engagement clutch spring for the launch control we've got a kwi clutch kit set up to work with our power level this is their green clutch kit this is their so. dr3 helix and then we've got a set of id 1050 injectors New map sensors, and then in these boxes, I'm not sure of the order, but we've got the DinoJet PV3 used for tuning it and data logging it. We've got the DinoJet launch control module, and then also a wideband kit, because our friends at Wayland Speed are going to be tuning this thing for oh, us yeah. remotely, getting us dialed in. That'd be nice. And it's going to run great. Switch over to them. Yep. So we're going to work on getting this stuff installed, but first, I got a little surprise for you. All right. So head on over to our shelf there see those two boxes that say nrp on them grab those oh yeah open those up <laughs> so our friends at nrp they're a big sponsor of my friend cody martin's number 296 ultra four car they said hey i'm gonna send you some radius rods and i knew just the guy that needs radius rods somehow you've had that x3 for multiple years and you're still running the stock radius rods. Yeah, I've only that one. Yeah, yeah. Well, not only did you get radius rods, you got a new pull plate. There's tie rods in here. Let's open that up. Super nice piece. Yeah, it's pretty light, too. But wait, there's more, as the late Billy Mays would say. R.I.P. Is this a steering rack for you? Oh, no. I don't know what this is. That's the NRP okay. gated shifter. So no longer do you gotta go yeah, to find the right gear. When you're trying to like, in a trail or anywhere really. Yeah. Trying to switch between low and high, that's kind of a pain. Yep. That'll be nice. So that stuff, uh, that stuff's all going on your machine. Sweet, awesome. <laughs> Thanks to NRP. Yeah. So we'll get uh, your machine pulled in. We're waiting on some pizza to show up. I'm pretty excited about yeah, that. Yeah. We'll eat, and then we'll get to work. Back up, Terry. All right, the X3 is in here. The pizza is in us. It's time to work on this thing, so I think Kyle's going to start. I'm taking the stock turbo off, and I'm probably going to work on doing some stuff with uh, the clutch setup in this. So we'll multitask, and hopefully, uh, yeah, it's probably going to take a while, to be honest. we got a lot of stuff to do, turns yeah, out. <laughs> yeah, I think hopefully the turbo just comes off easy. I've never had one off. So yeah, it's not a big... not to pull the bed, but we'll see. Yeah, if we have to, it's not a, it's not not a huge deal. Not so... All right, we'll get to work. All right, I got both 
both clutches out. I'll probably start with the secondary first, putting that new helix in there. No big deal with that. For the primary, we gotta put that primary spring in there and then the six new weights. We're kind of gonna be taking a stab in the dark at the weight setup for it as far as which magnets we put in the arms. Oh man, almost tripped over that. I actually did trip over that, it wasn't almost. So there's no real specific setup instructions for this particular application. So kind of going to be a guessing game. We're going to have to do some, some tuning on this, which uh, we'll be doing in another video, getting this thing super dialed in and running good. So I don't know. I'm going to do some thinking on that and figure out how many magnets we're going to put in each one of these uh, based on my presumed horsepower that this thing is going to make. So we'll get to that install on the clutch kit and We'll see what Kyle's doing over here. He's got the exhaust and intercooler out already. How's this going in here? Not bad, but just this heat shield and just kind of like destroying it. Oh. Yeah. Little, little screws that hold it together, I think, are just, they're, they're gone. Yeah, actually, those things are pretty much junk the first time after you start these things, so no surprise there that's yeah, after There's a lot of heat, I and mean, these things glow just by normal driving. Oh, yeah, big so, time. Just getting rid of them. Yep. It's times like this where I really wish I didn't forget my backpack that has my microphones in them that I seldomly use. This would be a great opportunity to use those. Unfortunately, memory didn't cooperate this morning, so... We got our secondary clutch here with our threaded rod all put together. Just gonna pop these bolts out of the bottom here. And then we're gonna undo the threaded rod. This will all come apart. So on these X3 clutches, there's some alignment marks. Right here, there's a little arrow. On the other side, there's another arrow dirt on my arm Let's get all these bolts out of here Kyle's making a ton of noise in the background I don't know if you guys can hear that Sorry. just kidding I know you can New Helix, ready to go on. Surprisingly, you know, some guys make it to this stage of the game here and they just run the, uh, they just run the nut down and put the bolts in like this. You gotta put some wrap in your secondary spring. You gotta do that. That's how these things work. Can't just run it down. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bunk set up. So Kyle has the lucky job of twisting this thing as I run this nut down to get it seated in there. So we're going to set the camera up and you just got to twist it until, well, this guy right here it's touching. is going over to this guy. So it's, uh, it's going to be a big twist, but he's a strong boy. He had some pizza. He'll get it. No problem. Wasn't too bad. No. Until you get right there. Nice little two person job. Definitely two person job. Sweet. No big deal. So our secondary is all back together. That was easy. Working on the primary now. So to change out the primary spring, we got to split our primary. And to do that, we got this nice KWI tool. To use this, we've got our clutch puller in here, bottomed out all the way. We're going to back this off a couple turns. And then we're going to put our splitter tool on here. You can see there's six holes that will line up with these bolts. 
We'll run those in, snug those out, and then we'll run this down with an impact. Be a big pop, and it'll split. Hey, gotta turn on the big power, number three. Yeah, I told you, that was loud. <laughs> that was loud. <laughs> All right, with this thing split, we're going to go ahead and uh, make some indexing marks on this, keep everything wearing the way that it was. So with this upper piece, two-hand job. Sorry about that. I can't take it apart. I could, I guess, but there's these. Jeez, man, we got so much stuff around here. Tons of stuff going on. Let me move some of the stuff, see what we can do here. But there's these little, uh, I forgot what the technical term is, little washers for these wear plates that go in here. They'll probably fall off. They normally do. But if we be gentle, easy, easy. Oh, oh, no. All right, we'll have to track those down. But now we can get to these bolts for our primary spring. We're going to have to put this over the threaded rod, tighten everything up there. Not a big deal. Blow this out, there's a lot of nastiness going on in there. Change the primary spring, change the weights, this will be ready to go back together. Easy as that. What are you doing? So, uh, working on the turbo. Oh, you've been on oh, that, that for a while. That, that heat shield sucked, but I got it off. I did, or there's a couple bolts left and I'm about to make a mess with coolant. I don't, you don't want that. No, so. no mess with this floor. That's a good floor. Yeah, uh, there's there's other figures here that yeah, I don't watch this video and they don't like the mess on the floor. So we're gonna have to. Uh, drain we got this nice drain pan here. We'll get that out. Oh, that's definitely gonna catch a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Someone say they're ready to take a turbo out. Dang. Old little guy. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's not too bad. Not too bad. The floor is my first one. Why does this one look cleaner than mine? Because I wash my machine. Oh, oh and that's it. Yeah, that's it. Does it still move? Yeah. I mean, it works. Oh, okay. It worked. Nice. Well, cool. Just reverse the process. Throw that other one on. That shouldn't be a big deal. Yeah, minus the heat shield. That ain't going back on. Yeah, you don't need that. Someone had pre-stripped out these Torx screws for uh, taking this off. This holds the primary spring in but no no big deal we got uh, those out we got a new pink primary spring going in should get us about 28 2900 rpm engagement so that'll be super good for launch control we just got to put this back on tighten it down and we'll get the weights changed out so changing the weights is super easy i mean you don't need to pull the clutch to change the weights on this but they're right here so we're going to do it now we're going to start with four magnets in each of the base weights we got these bigger gen 6 arms we're going to leave those empty for now and that's going to be our starting point so like i said we'll take this out at a later date and do some clutch tuning and some data logs and all that happy stuff to maximize the performance of this thing but that'll get us going for today put that back together and ready to go back on the machine all right clutches on torque the primary 90 foot pounds Torque secondary, 52 foot-pounds. We got new map sensors in there. Can't really see them, but we got the new injector dynamics. 1050X is in there. Kyle's putting his exhaust on. The new turbo, looking brand used in there, very good. So we're at the point now where we should be able to tune this thing, put the new file in. Man, thank God you had that fuel line hooked up. That would have been brutal if you did. If you didn't. <laughs> all of my face. Oh, man. I would have felt really bad. For a second. Okie doke. Let's see here. All right. So it's the next day. We had to get some custom files for this thing because this really isn't an out-of-the-box deal, putting this RR Turbo on a Turbo R machine. So John over there at Whalen, he got us the tunes we needed. Those are uploading right now. And Kyle's got the passenger seat out so we can start doing the wiring for the launch control module and our wideband module so we can get this thing super fine-tuned. So we'll show you some of the wiring for that as we get going. The tune's uploading right now. We'll probably try and start this up 
just to make sure it runs. We don't have the intercooler in yet, just so we can run the wires for the launch control module to the coils and do that a little bit cleaner. So since we already had it out, we figured we'd just leave it out until all of our wiring's done. So, but it's come along pretty good. Everything's going smooth so far. Probably just ruined that, but it is what it is. So we'll see. <laughs> All right, our tune's uploaded. Why not? You know, we don't have the intercooler back in or anything. Like I said, we're still doing some wiring, but I'd like to see if this thing runs. What do you think? Should we fire it up? Yeah, why not? All right, yeah, go ahead and hit it. get it outside a little bit but you know this had a different tune in it different tuning company before and uh man even when it seemed like it was 70 degrees out this thing sounded like it had a, a you know 240 degree duration camshaft in it you would start it up and it would just roll roll <laughs> roll and surge and just and it was embarrassing in my opinion or you put it in if it was in drive and you started sometimes it would engage the clutch it'd be surging so bad <laughs> Remember, Brutal. Remember we were, we were at crossbar? Oh, yeah. So, oh, whaling tune, baby. Good yeah, unit. Way better. Let's uh, let's get on some wiring now. Oh, when yeah. are we going to do that shifter while yeah, we got shifter that torn while apart? It's apart? And then we got the radius rods and the tie rod. Yeah, that suspension stuff. Those tie rods, I, yeah. tie rods on an X3 aren't super fun, I'll tell you that. I've never done them. Yeah, so, well, first time. you're in for a treat. <laughs> <laughs> Not. Well, we've got our launch control module wiring done. So. The wiring for this runs up to our launch control switch. This is a momentary switch. You hold that down when you want the launch control to work. When you don't want the launch control to work, you just leave her be. And then the other end of this harness goes back to the coils. It gets power from the coils. It's, there's a ground here on the battery. Pretty simple setup. Kyle's got the shifter in. That's looking super good. You can essentially, the main point of this is being able to go from whatever forward gear you're in to reverse super simply so you can just essentially if you're all the way back and low you just slam it forward into reverse and then you can pull it back into uh either high or grab this and slam it back into low so that's super cool a lot of the crawl guys use that when yeah. they need to change gears uh you know very quickly right. there's no you know index that uh yeah you're trying to jog around i mean there were so many little ears here yeah which we had a little clearance it but it looks like i might buy a new piece and make it a little better look yeah you got a little got a little carried away there didn't you i was, I was following a how-to video who made that who made that, that how-to that was your boy cody oh boy we'll have to have a talk with him offline but no this thing's like nice you drill a couple holes it's mounted pretty i mean yeah super solid yeah very nice piece so interior is going to go back in got to put the intercooler back in that should and, take five minutes. Yeah, no uh, no big deal there. And then we're ready to work on the suspension stuff. All right, so just did some uh, setup in the Dynojet. We've got it hooked up to the AFR module. We've got some parameters filled out here so Kyle can look at them if he chooses to do so. As he's driving around, you can get to a nice little mount that goes on here for your gauge cluster. You know, I prefer looking straight ahead of me, focusing on what's out there, data. It's got, you know, solid whaling tune in it. It's going to be good. But, uh, yeah, we just fired this up. I put it in gear a couple times, moved it back and forth. We're going to retorque the primary. Tried this shifter out. This thing works super good. So it's in park right now. Grab this. That's reverse. And so from reverse, if you just pull back all the way, that's going to be high gear. And then if you pull back on this uh, lever right there, that'll let you go to low. And then if you're in low, push it all the way forward. That's reverse. And then same thing from reverse, high, low. Or if you're in high, so it makes it super easy to find the gear that you need to be in. No jockeying around with notches and all that stuff. So very nice piece from NRP. Uh, let's fire this thing up and just hear it quick, you know. Look at some data, make some noises, see what it sounds like. Launch control? 
Oh yeah. RIP my ears. <laughs> so the cool thing about this DinoJet launch control module that Whalen sells is you can just download the DinoJet software and you can adjust the launch control settings you want to whatever RPM you want. It's pretty cool. With our clutch engagement being a little bit higher, I was seeing 2800. The launch control is coming in, I think, at like 22 now, so we can up those numbers, get a little bit more boost out of the hole. That'll be cool. But we also have to do some clutch tuning as well to figure out, you know, where our weights need to be. And with that, that's probably going to change our engagement a little bit. So we're not going to mess with that a ton right now. We'll do that when uh, we do some testing with this thing. So it's pretty much all back together outside of uh, this cover right here. I got the intercooler tightened down. So pretty much all of our performance stuff is done. I think now it's time to work on the suspension on this thing. Oh yeah. So we just decided to take a little uh, Taco Bell break from working on Kyle's machine. We we're pretty hungry. So we went to Taco Bell, we got our food. And then also decided to watch some YouTube in my GMC Sierra. And you might be asking, how in tarnation are you doing that? Well, one car stereo's AI box turns any factory Apple CarPlay equipped vehicle into an Android based infotainment system. So I, mean, I like my iPhones, I use an iPhone, but this is pretty sweet. It allows you to watch YouTube and pretty much uh, do a whole bunch with the uh, Google Play Store. So uh, I've got an affiliate link below for that. If you guys are interested in adding one of these to your factory Apple CarPlay equipped vehicle, check out One Car Stereo. Affiliate link below. Click on it right now. All right, we got this thing up in the air. We got the radius rods laid out in their corresponding positions. So these have all the super nice FK JMX Himes on them. Best you can get there. 6061 aluminum, black anodized finish, good stuff. I'm ready to put them on. We've done this before, not a huge job. I think we're gonna do the rods tonight, or the radius rods tonight. We'll do the tie rods tomorrow, we'll take it for a little test drive. It's getting late tonight, so. Yeah, you said the tie rods are a big job. It's, I mean, I, they're just kind of odd to get at. I mean, yeah, yeah it's just hard to, to hard to fit tools in there to get the inner tie rods off. That'll be a project for tomorrow, but for now we'll uh, we'll get these going and yeah, these see what it looks look like. Good. They're gonna look good on there. Yeah, that's what you need. All uh, right, those new radius rods and that radius rod plate—they're looking super good. So it's another day. This is day three of this project. Three, that's kind of kind of gotten drug out. Not yeah. really, but kind of. But it turns out when you start working on stuff at six, seven o'clock at night, you know that's just how it goes. So. And it's been hot. Yeah. So. Get these tie rods off. It's not the most fun job especially with all this stuff in the way. So shine some light on the subject here. You can kind of zoom in and see there's like some flat spots on the inner tie rod. We're gonna have to try and get a pipe wrench or something on that. The unfortunate deal is there's just not a whole lot of room to swing that. So we're gonna do our best to not have to disassemble the entire front end of this yeah. thing to get them changed. Yeah, I don't wanna pull control arms. Yeah, me either. So. Let's just start taking some some small stuff apart and do what we'll we can it. to get that out of there. Yeah. All right, so we've got this tie rod loosened up. How we did that? Well, mm -hmm. first we started off taking some suspension components apart and then found out that uh, fitting the pipe wrench in there was still impossible. So we got out one of my favorite tools, yep. the old air hammer. Snap on you. That's probably the best one out there. So we had that chisel bit on there and it was just enough to shock it loose. Now we got a set of channel locks on there. And Kyle's working on get it spun out. There we go. And she's out. No big deal. Yep, just a little bit of... We ain't reusing that. It's no, fine. No. So we'll take measurements off this one to get the other one uh, roughly set up and close. And then set it on there. Easy. All right, we got the new... Jeez, we can't really see. New clevis is in there. If you look this way, you can find it in there. Oh, look at that. That's all tightened down, locked tight in. Kyle's installing the tie rod. We took a measurement off the old ones, so that's uh, roughly where we need to be at. We'll do a final check once everything's installed. So we just gotta tighten that down. Tighten up our jam nuts, tighten this over here at the knuckle. We'll be good. All right, both tie rods are on. Wheels are ready to go back on. Everything's tightened up. Hopefully Kyle did that. I think so. Now it's time to go, uh, I think, rip this thing. Yeah. I think we maybe we'll get the uh, tuner laptop out and... 
the old channel off. Nah, we're just going to turn the launch control up until we can anymore. Oh, that works. <laughs> yeah, so the only thing to do is floor it and see what happens. All right, he's got this unit running. It's running good. Got a laptop. I'm just going to turn that launch control up a little bit as far as we can before she starts grabbing the belt. And yeah, let's launch it. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. So out of the box, this launch control module was set up to come in at 2200 RPMs. So our clutch engagement, I think right now is about 2800. We'll verify that right now on the dash. So start this thing up. Don't get ran over, watch out. <laughs> This thing isn't fully dialed in, but it should rip pretty good, I feel. Let's do a little launch here on the cement, see how it is. We need more space here. <laughs> it was just starting to come on and he let out of it. Okay, we're gonna do a little grass launch, see how this works. That's probably going to be it for uh, testing out here today. Probably going to get castrated for that. So you know It technically wasn't you, but you told me to do it. So. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to figure that out in post. But anyways, you know, this thing, uh, this thing's in pretty good shape, I feel. So I think we'll, we're either going to do some field tuning for the clutching and send some data logs to the whaling guys, or we'll just take it down there when I pick my machine up probably the second one we'll put this on the dyno get it completely dialed in yeah i'm for that one and you're just gonna have a super powerful machine i don't know yeah i'm pumped should yeah. be should be awesome yeah this thing's in really good shape got those new suspension parts on there bunch more power yeah you can get those at uh, rrutv you so. betcha yeah we can install them as machine well like this we can make you something a lot more crazy pretty much make you whatever you want so oh, yeah. give us a shout and we'll get you set up well that wraps up kyle's x3 again that thing's in great shape big thanks to nrp big thanks to the whaling guys everyone who helps make these projects possible for kyle i myself john scott we're having a great time out here doing this stuff so a lot more stuff coming some side-by-side -side stuff boat stuff again head on over to rrutvshop.com get yourself some merch if you don't have a side-by-side -side, bunch of good side-by-side -side parts on there Bunch of cool stuff coming. I can't wait for it. You guys are going to have to wait for it. But I guess I have to wait for it too. But, Anyways, appreciate your support in this matter and see you in a couple days.